Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SK beat. We're kicking. Just kicking. Just kicking. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of why you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can can and a can can, a can can, a can can, and a wheel. Now we're off to. Hello, everybody, and it's time to get busy because it's Friday. It's Friday. It's Friday. It's Friday. I'm here with you. Let's get it poppin'. Here I go. You wanted me on the tube? Okay. We're going to talk about candy. Candy girl. And Todd situation. Yes, I that last uh, episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, when Todd was trying to make peace with Candy, make nice, and try to tell her, honey, I want something for me. I'm like, Todd, hey, when you married her, you should have wanted something for you. You should have had some business dealings that y'all did together so y'all can grow as a power couple and put your stamp on something else where you only did this. Cause like she got to do her thing, or she creates several um, money uh, streams for herself and the family. Uh, you needed to have done that as well. Stayed in your lane, continue to do what you got to do, and then when it's time to come back with her and make another project, if one comes up that you're interested in, then y'all could have did that. But technically, you sitting in that pink chair, you looking like a itch, okay? A complaining itch. How y'all like to call us when y'all get mad at us? But little do y'all know that y'all act that same way. Y'all still have that same mentality like y'all call women that when y'all get mad at them. But see, one thing I was upset about with Todd was basically he just felt like he can come out and tell her. Well, I felt some kind of way, you know, because you did this and everybody just know you. But, but Todd, she's always been in the forefront. She was part of a girl group. That consisted of four members, five members, something like that. All right. She's always been in that spotlight. She's always written songs for artists. She sold songs, you know, that she wrote to artists. So she's always been in that field where you would see her up front. Maybe not as a lead something or not when we're talking about the singing. But, you know, she's definitely have forced her way through other avenues to making money and being on camera. So, with you being totally in the background, nobody knowing who you is unless it rolls credits of what you did to make this film or this play or whatever. And if you're giving everybody a shout out on the team that made it possible for that project to go through for the masses to see and partake of. But, Toddy Todd, I tell you, I have to go back to calling you little tiny Tim Todd Tucker. Girl, I can't understand. You were part of a G train, a G, a old G train that was trucking along and making it make sense over here. And I'm talking about none other than Greg Leakes, Apollo Nada, uh, who else was it? Uh, Peter Thomas, and then you, little tiny Tim Todd Tucker, then you were a part of that. And you could have learned a lot. Uh, somewhat un illegal stuff and some legal stuff. You could have learned a lot for those G's. And I'm talking about Peter Thomas and um, Greg Leakes. Well, of course, we all know Greg Leakes is not with us anymore. Not on this earth plane of living. Uh, and Apollo Nida. I don't know why you done stole his look. Why you still his look, Todd? Because uh, T Apollo Nida came out with that look when he left uh, prison. Okay, we had to do his little stink for the feds. All right, because it really, to me, don't look good on you. Maybe if you trim it down a little more, you know, to see a little bit more space 
in the um wares of what you're trying to go for with that look and that beard look it really don't look good i don't know who told you it looked good on you but it don't you look like an amish or a mormon type man or uh what do you call those folk well, i think those are the amish community yeah like a rabbi or something but you were giving me nothing but straight up jealousy and envious and the two are not staying because both of y'all are not on the same realm of a power struggle you know she gonna make it do what it what she gonna make it do because her interest peaks and she has to get her hands in every kind of project which there's nothing wrong with it all that i can say uh she's not spending enough time with her family and riley has definitely told her that to her face behind her back and every way she could see it if she could she put probably put it in the sky mama you spend too much time making money instead of spending more time with us you know money's gonna always be there but we're not okay we're not an intangible object okay we're tangible at this time we could be replaced we could be gone in a blink of an eye without any notice but you know little tiny tim todd tucker is over there whining saying well i wanted something for myself i do not want everything to be connected with you they already think i don't do nothing i'm like girl see greg he never said no shit like that even apollo knight and all his bad things and peter thomas they ain't say no shit like that they ain't like uh everybody looking at me as the 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 uh third wheel and and, and I, i'm just trying to live off your money i'm like well all of that's true Todd. all of that is so much uh in a true realm and you you just can't and i really believe uh, that you're gonna leave her after a certain period of time that's just my thoughts my opinions and the ops that you're giving me that you're giving me a tease of jealousy and jealous in a house will never stand it's going to falter each and every time and like i said you did well by can you gave her two beautiful children she got that's what she wanted but if it came down to you and that almighty dollar guess what she gonna choose all right guess who she gonna choose if it came down to you her mother who you think she gonna choose Todd? who you think she gonna choose so you are already at the end of the stick and you just need to complete projects Todd. complete projects just like you started on that pool and Ken had to use that as a storyline and that was some straight up bullshit you know what I'm saying I would never take that scene I would have never let the whole world see how I keep certain parts of my house no 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 not good for tv and we don't want you to be that transparent okay that's just like you going into the toilet uh in your bathroom and you showing us the ring behind your toilet you know what i'm saying like girl everybody have that show us something we don't know show us how to prove to do money deals and this that and the third and with todd you need to be teaching him the same things because evidently he is piss poor when it comes to knowing how to do what he needs to do he needs to tell you uh no you need your grown girl put on your grown girl panties and go out there and continue to do and be successful but for me and my i'm gonna go on my merry way and i'm gonna have projects that i do at least for a couple of years so you can see what I can do. So we can be matched equally. So that's the point that Todd is trying to make. But he's failing at it miserably. Okay. And he's just doing too much. Too fast. Too soon. And it shows me that it must be a time. Uh, a distinct time where he's supposed to cash in. And whether or not he tip out on candy. I don't know. You know. I'm pretty sure she's uh, anticipated the thought of him more than likely uh, leaving. That's why she told she told him, you're going to sign this contract. <laughs> she told that on a Wednesday. I ain't walking down nobody's aisle. I don't care how much money I don't put out. I would cancel it. I would cancel all of it until we come to an understanding, an agreement. And I'm like, get, get, get him, Kanye. Get him, honey. You, Mama Joyce said she ain't birthed no fool up in here. And I was all for that. Can a little side eye here, honey. When he was talking about, I guess we won't get married. He was just saying stuff to make her get triggered. When in actuality, his behind was getting triggered. Because she wasn't walking down nobody's aisle. She wasn't going to let her daddy marry them. <laughs> she said, uh-uh. No. 
we need to get straight in our minds with this contract because I worked too damn hard and too damn long to have somebody come such as yourself say they love me say they want to be with me but then walk away and thinking they're gonna get half or take half they're like uh-uh no way no jose because we'll have mama joyce out on your behind like a dog to a bone honey a dog to a bone she already told you and sung to you literally literally ain't no mountain high enough ain't no river wide enough ain't no valley low enough to keep her from getting on your ass Todd. okay but we're gonna go into what the peach report had did uh had did an expose on them gave us a little uh inside edition of a uh, um of the parts that it played last week or last sunday so here we go oh you're not gonna include me in that this is the first time that this has happened everything else we've done together right which i thought we was always doing so together and then you tried to cut me up I create a lot of things that I don't care that I don't get credit for. Okay. Anything I create, oh, candy, da da da. So you resent. And at times I feel a little left out. I always try to include you in what I'm doing. But you were straight trying to cut me out of socialize at first as a no, producer. No, you just wanted no. me to be talent. No. Yes, no. you did. Socialize is about four females who start a uh, anonymous gossip blog. We filmed a pilot episode and we're pitching it. I have a deal on the table, so we'll see what happens. You were just like, you can write the theme song and you can be in it. But I don't want you to be executive producer on this. But I'm surprised you would even feel a way. It's not that. But if I do the same thing, like when we do stuff, if we don't include you, it's like, oh, you're not going to include me in that. This is the first time that this has happened. Everything else we've done together. Right. Which I thought we was always doing so together. And then you tried to cut me up. I create a lot of things that I don't care that I don't get credit for. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And it blasted that ass. And I was there for it. So she knows what's what. She's not going to let anybody uh, use her and manipulate her when it comes to that dollar. And how she's being looked at and shown on a platform. She's just not going to be for the, for the shit. Okay. So I do admire her in that like still trying to love on her husband. Trying to do what it make it do. Because he already have the best of both worlds. She's a rich itch and my nini voice and she continues trying to make it grind even though i think she needs to slow it down a little bit because those kids are growing and all thing i'm seeing is the housekeeper the maid the caregiver being and and, and taking on their uh, personalities versus can and being there being a one-on-one -on -one mom and you know raising her kids herself because i'm telling you Huh, the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. And when you entrust people that you love and care for to um, hold down your family, many of your children while you're gone, they're going to create and they're going to emulate what they see on a daily basis to whatever person that's caregiving for them or their caregiver. You see what I'm saying? Because I used to be in a daycare business. And um, that's a lot of people got mad. Well, I can tell a lot of people, but a few of my parents got mad when their children be talking about me over the weekend when they're at home and they're they're like getting a little book bags and stuff ready. Talking about we going on Miss Delphine house. We we going over to the school. <laughs> no, and they used to have I used to have conferences and they used to tell me that I said, "Well, honey, did you not know they spend." Eight to twelve hours with me, and I have to always do my due diligence and try not to cuss around them or try to live my life and my personality when I'm around you all's kids because I want to set the tone of how they should do things and how they should interact with people, especially on their level, and how to share, how to care, and how to be outstanding individuals. That's what I was teaching in my platform. And if they so help wanted to come by, and I even had some that wanted me to keep their children for the weekend when they were going out of town. Now, you know, I ain't got them a love over here. And I, I raised with not spoiling a child. Okay. When a child needs some, uh, you know, reinforcement, you can best believe hands got popped. All right. Butts got popped a little bit. 
but I got permission from the family to definitely, you know, toe the line with certain things. And, and, you know, they understood where I was coming from. And no parent, you know, ever left their children or uh, had their children come back with clothes stained and this, that, and third. And, and uh, them coming home <coughs> saying other things that didn't happen or did happen or whatever. Just telling them about their day, honey. And I was like, okay, okay. Me and my deceased aunt had run a daycare out of our home. So, uh, I have that under my belt as well. So, I understand. I'm saying, well, Candy, you know, when you got people around, you know, make sure you got good people around your children. Because they're going to emulate, they're going to imitate, and they're going to foster some of their behavior uh, from whoever's caregiving for them uh, for a long length of time. Or, they're, you know, they're pretty much with that person 8 to 12 hours a day so just look forward to happening and like i said that's what Riley said she ain't got time for the bullshit she gotta try to live her life she gotta find out who bride of birds is before and after <laughs> she said i come see y'all come visit but i ain't staying yeah <laughs> like girl get it get it get it get it girl but uh it, it's it's a hot mess it really is um that todd feels away because, like I said, he was doing what he was doing before he met Candy. He was behind the scenes. I don't know if he had executive pro uh, producer rights back then when he was working on Real Housewives of Atlanta. But he was at a pivotal point working with a, a network that was moving and shaking. So, if, like I said, if it wasn't for uh, Phaedra, they probably would have never crossed paths. Because he didn't try to go up to Candy and do nothing. Candy didn't try to go up to him and do nothing. You know? So, it was just that bridge that needed to have been brought for them both to cross over together. So, with that said, Candy should have a little bit more um, forgiveness in a sense. Now, I ain't going to say, you know, uh, we need to bring Phaedra back. And Candy need to get a grip. Even though, you know, I thought that uh, at some points ago uh when i was filming or doing stuff on her and saying you know she's just selfish she need to let that girl come back but i understand you can could have been put in jail for something that wasn't true uh she she could have lost a lot or she would have lost a lot of endorsements that um she was already uh having sealed deals with or signed the sealed deals that were closed she just needed to implement them so I can see, I can see, because you're taking somebody and putting them in jail. You're, you're infringing on their way of providing for their family members. So I got it good, okay? So I never really pressed for the idea for uh, Candid to forget what happened and let her come back on. Because uh, I firmly believe, whether anybody else believe it like myself, uh, she got a, a hold on Bravo because, you know, they had let certain scenes be allowed they kept her in a certain light but they didn't tell her what was going on i don't know if it could have just been played as a storyline that went left or whatever but they put up with it so if she may have a clause that in there she ain't gonna never say it or whatnot or make it come out that you know hey no as long as i'm here i will not film with her and if it doesn't be uh where you all can respect that and honor that then maybe we have to see legal, you know, legal alternatives or avenues or whatnot. But that's just my theory, my uh, thoughts, and um, that's what I pretty much think about it. But yeah, I, I just I, I hate when a man, you know, ten when they ain't really got what they want, but once they achieve it, then they want to tell the woman that helped them get to that point of uh, understanding and having acknowledgement for their works that, you know, they turn on them. You know, like, I, I want something for myself. I'm like, oh, well, you used her up to the point where you're stable, you're financially stable, and you ready to do, do projects with other men or, or simply by yourself so you can make a name for yourself. But I'm like, maybe this is not your season, Todd. Maybe this was not what you were supposed to do in this lifetime, okay? Because I'm pretty sure... Your lifestyle from where you were to where you've been with Candy is a lot more lucrative and a lot more lavish than what you were trying to get down and do for yourself without uh, having a household name brand wife. Okay, I'm just saying. That's all I got, y'all, for this video. Uh, get down in those comments and let me know what y'all thought about Todd and Candy and this whole thing about, I guess, both of them being jealous of each other. You know what I'm saying? Candy, like... Hey, you were starting something. You didn't want me to get no producer credit, right? But you wanted me to be in it. You wanted me to write the theme song. But I couldn't get that major money, you know, 
behind being a productor i mean a producer on whatever you were trying to bring out as a project then you got him talking about well i'm feeling some kind of way for the negative because you know everybody's saying candy 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 but they ain't saying talk 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 they're trying to put me like i'm um, your accessory i'm um, your afterthought i'm um, your backup person i'm um, your maid i am your assistant and i ain't i'm like that but i'm like you you loved it before so you might well continue to like it now. And I mean she's already in an open marriage with you. Because you want to see her working with females. Getting it in all sexual and stuff of that nature. But you don't want her to be getting it in. And doing scenes with a man. So I'm like how one sided is that. If y'all open like y'all say. Why don't you have a man in there. Todd. So she can get her little feel on something else. She can give him some. Then he can feel him. And you know, you know what I'm saying? Because when you're doing that singles. Or what do you call it? Um, What do you call it? Singles. It's when you get swinging. Is what I'm saying. The, well, what I was trying to say. You know, you might well be in that swingers uh, type of relationship. Where she can go and get it with a man. Because you love to get with women. You love getting it in with two women. Or three women. Candy plus two or candy plus one. And you don't have no problems letting candy let you stick your private parts in somebody else's uh, vagina. Just as long as she's there. She may have a definite problem with it if she's not there. But if she's there, she wants to partake of it too. And she wants to see if you're giving it to her or giving it to the uh, added addition to y'all little tr tricks y'all got going on. Or you giving it to them better than you giving it to her. I'm just saying. Make it make sense. But um, that's I'm through with this video, guys. Hopefully, y'all like it. Love it. Gotta have more. Y'all know what to do. Make sure you subscribe, like, and share my videos. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.